So I'm gonna do an inclined plane example uh, where there's a cube sliding down the inclined plane. But in this example, um, as the cube is sliding down the plane, the plane is also going to accelerate towards the left. Um, while the cube is going to have movement in x and y direction down. So here in this example, we want to determine what is the horizontal acceleration of the inclined plane where the block is released to slide down. And this problem can be solved either Euclidean mechanics or um, using Lagrangians. And in this case, I'm going to show that using Lagrangians is pretty simple. Um, so here we see the image, we have low m for the cube, we have big m for the inclined plane, and we have a theta for the, um, uh, a theta in the lower right corner. So the first thing that we want to do in this problem is set up a coordinate system. So the inclined plane is going to go in the xy direction, and the cube is going to go in the x2 um, direction, to the right. So now that we have the um, coordinate system, we can, step with, we can start with step one. And in step one, we want to determine the relative distance between the inclined plane and the cube, which would be x1 plus x2. And in step two, we can try and determine um, what is the height as the cube is moving. So here we can see that if the cube moves from plane place to uh, from place one to two, um, and then the relative distance between the movement is x1 plus x2. Um, and the height is going down. The height is equal to x2 plus, um, this is a mistake, plus x1 times the tangent of theta by geometry. So let me just fix the x1. Okay, okay now that we know what the height is, we can step, start with step 3, which is finding out the Lagrangian. So, um, the Lagrangian is equal to uh, kinetic energy plus potential energy, so T plus V. And the first thing we want to do is determine the kinetic energy. Here, um, both the inclined plane and the cube have um, kinetic energy. So, energy is 1 half mv squared. So for the inclined plane, it's capital M. And then your V is going to be in the x1 direction. So x1 dot squared. And then you can have your, um, your uh, cube movement and velocity so the cube is gonna move in the x2 direction so this velocity is x that's 2 squared and then we're also gonna have the y direction which would be the height that we determined in step 2 and that's all quantity squared and of course the x's are dotted because they're actually velocities And now that we have kinetic energy, we can determine the potential energy, which is gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy is mgh, and um, our h we already determined in step two, so we can just copy it down. So here's our total Lagrangian. Now that the Lagrangian is done, we can move on to step four, which is determining the equations of motion um, using the Lagrangian that we derived. So there's two equations of motions in the system because we have x1 and x2. So d d d d d d. So d d t d l d x that one is equal to dl dx1 and then dvt dl dx dot 2 is equal to dl dx2 um, and then we just have to take the derivatives using our Lagrangian so um, as we look at the Lagrangian above we can take um, a ddt and a uh, del dot x1 the partial derivative of the Lagrangian which gives us capital M x1 double dot plus lowercase m 
x2 double that plus x1 double that um, times tangent squared beta, of course. And then that's equal to, uh, let me just move down the page. So now we can see that um, the only dependence on x1 is mg x2 plus x1 tangent theta. So we take a partial derivative of this, we have mg um, tangent theta left over. And then for x to that, uh, we repeat the same process. And because the equations are similar, we pretty much get the similar equation. Um, the only difference is that the dependence on x2 is lowercase, um, is times lowercase m at the beginning. But the rest is pretty much the same. And now that we have both equations, we actually can see that they're very similar. And by um, subtracting one equation from the other, we can prove that we're on the right track because we can set up um, capital N x1 double that minus lowercase m x2 double that. And that would be equal to zero because all the other terms cancel out. And this shows us that um, if we take a um, time derivative of these two um, terms, we can see that um, capital M x1 that is equal to lowercase m x2 that, which shows that momentum is conserved. So we're on the right track in this problem. Okay, so now that we have conserved momentum, we can move to step 5, which is now that we have the equations of motion, uh, it's just solving for x1 double that because that is the acceleration that the plane will have. So this requires a lot of algebra because we have two unknowns, which is x1 double that and x2 double that, but we have two equations for it. So if we set up um, the equations, we can solve for x1 double that. I'm not going to do this part because it is a lot of algebra. Um, and that's not really relevant to the problem, but our final answer is mg sine theta cosine theta over capital M plus M sine squared theta. And so now that we look over back at the problem, we found the acceleration of the inclined plane um, by first determining the coordinates uh, deriving the Lagrangian, then finding the equations of motions, and then simply putting the equations together to find x1 double that. And that's our final solution.